This week, safely arrived in row, we take an inspection of our dynamic rigging on deck after our first 700 nautical miles. The hard working stuff is, is tight. We also explore some of Robe's historical sites and cook up some passage food. Okay, just put them in like so. Before we head off on the next leg of our trip to Kangaroo Island. I was trying to slow us down just under a head sail, but it, it wasn't working out, you know, it was pretty sloppy. There's still some pretty crazy seas behind us and a bit of a big swell. Woo, here's a big one now. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For the last four years, we have been sailing around our island continent and sharing our experiences with you. <laughs> yes, look at that. Sensation. After nine months of hard work, we have just completed an extensive refit of our 50-year-old 30-foot fiberglass sailboat in Tasmania. Now we have a short weather window to close the loop and sail the 2,000 nautical miles home to Western Australia before the westerly winds of autumn return. To join us each week in a race against time to reunite with our families, thanks for subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell button. Previously on Free Range Sailing, you saw us sail the first major leg of our passage home, covering 629 nautical miles from Port Davey in the bottom southwest corner of Tasmania to Robe in South Australia. So we arrived in Robe yesterday and we pretty much ate some food, cleaned up the boat, the worst of the boat. Troy gave our wet weather gear a really good soak in some fresh water and hung it out and then we passed out. And uh, we found ourselves moored between a whole lot of fishing boats. It turns out that uh, Rob Martin, our friend who provides us with SATCOM communications from clients at, his mate, um, another one of his clients, hooked us up with a berth here and has helped us run some errands this morning. We already got all our laundry done because quite a lot of the bed got quite salty and some of our clothes got quite salty. So we managed to clean all that up. I just showed you the sheepskin lining that we use on top of our bed and that works really well because it actually prote protects our mattress. Um, and so it turned out that our mattresses didn't get very salty. They're in a sunbrella cover because of that sheepskin lining and we were able to, the laundromat was really fantastic. Turns out that the guy who's given us this first berth actually owns the laundromat uh, here in Robe. He's a bit of a, sounds like he's a bit of a famous local here perhaps. A raconteur. A raconteur. Entrepreneur. Yeah, so um, yeah, he set up the laundromat here, so it was really great. We were able to wash that sheepskin lining and also all our very salty sheets. Are you talking about the, the never-ending benefits of being friends with Rob Martin? Yeah. <laughs> if, if you have the Rob. opportunity, <laughs> be friends with Rob Martin. <laughs> or get your satellite communications done through him and who knows what else you'll get thrown in the bargain. <laughs> we can highly recommend. So yeah, Troy's already hard at work getting some stuff done so we can head off to Kangaroo Island tomorrow. Carefully sorting our Dyneema soft shackles. Mm. <laughs> no, he's been up there working on the wind steering um, because we had a little bit of uh, chafing. So we'll show you the solution that he's come up. Well, the, something new that we're going to try uh, to resolve that chafing issue. And um, if we get time, we're just going to see how we go for time. We've got to get all these jobs done. But if we get time, we'll show you a little bit more of Robe. And yeah. Then we're off to Kangaroo Island tomorrow. That wind vane while we're talking about it, that's um, it's been pretty much the star of the show as far as we're concerned on this cruise. We've um, we've made a few adjustments to the wind vane, but after we left Port Davey, we haven't really touched that stick much at all, um, you know, the tiller. Once we set that little experimental rig up, um, we were whistling, you know, we were whistling through the night, six, seven knots. I think we averaged, you know, like after punching through waves and stuff like that, I think we averaged five and a half maybe 5.6 knots through the night. But we were able to stay relatively safe and dry and, and the wind vane handled the whole thing. Um, the only thing that um, happened was some of the Ronston shocks at the back there that we use as redirects. Um, I used Spectraline to sort of tie them in, the lashing chafed through. 
instead I, um, I moved on to some Dyneema that I had and that's been trouble free. There was no, no chafing on that stuff. So we were talking about the failure of the, um, the lashing for the Ronston shock before. It was because it's a little bit sharp back there. But I've been carrying around these 8mm eye bolts for a while, so they might be a nice solution. So this race spec, that is 400 kilos. So obviously two of them is 800 kilos, nearly a tonne, way, way more than what this is going to put on there. So at the moment, I'm just, um, that'll have a nice bit of play, that little lark's head. And I'm just putting a button knot stopper there, just because I know it's a knot that's never going to, it won't move. All of the things on the boat at the moment, they're a little bit tricky. Um, we've gone off, <laughs> we've gone off sailing the bite before all the systems are fully worked out, because I didn't want to come up with these ideas on the dock and just sort of start drilling the boat and you know just going to the chandelier and buying these things and just installing them. I wanted to go sailing and just think about the things that the systems that I want to put in and I'd like to try and get away with some winches um, you know use old timey purchases and stuff like that you know four to ones and things so it might be a little bit of a departure from what a, a normal modern yacht looks like some of the systems that we end up with um, but that'll be alright, you know, because I, I want to get away from winches a bit. On a 30 footer, things for like um, our reefing lines and stuff like that. The outhaul is a 4 to 1 in the, in the boom and that's fine, that gives us heaps of mechanical advantage. But the, like reefing, putting the first and second reef in, at the moment, they're basically a, well, a pretty high friction 2 to 1, so that, they're like a 1 and a half to 1. So we don't really have enough, but I don't want to run them through jammers and winches and stuff like that. Um, so I'm still coming up with a plan. I just didn't want to be in a hurry to commit to a certain system. And once you've bolted it to your deck, you are committed. So we're working it out. You know, at the moment, things look a little bit awkward, but we're experimenting with different things. But after, after this trip to Fremantle, um, we'll have a really good idea of the final, the final um, way that both Pascal and I would like the rigging of this boat to, to end up. And where we can, um, using, using solid uh, low friction devices wherever possible. We can see here, this old bullseye fair lead, in those 629 miles, <laughs> this thing worked really hard. So we've got a little bit of chafe happening there. Okay, but you would expect to see that after like, 600 something miles of sailing um, But we'll see if we get to Fremantle and I'm seeing really really bad chafe through this line Then of course these have got to go and I'll put pulley blocks, but we did have pulleys before um, And they didn't work very well. They got out of alignment because pulleys they do need a certain alignment Whereas a lot of these things are alignment independent to some degree So we did see our lines getting damaged even though we had pulleys before because they were low price low quality pulleys so, you know, it's still an experiment, so um, we'll, just, we'll just see how we go. So there we go, that's a, a fully articulated, no worries, no friction sort of deal. And it's low tech, isn't it? We can look at that, we can in inspect it and go, yes, looks good, yes, no chafe, not still tight, stainless, well, you know, look at it, there's no pitting or corrosion there. With regards um, Dyneema's chafe resistance, it's really high. Some people have the idea that like, Dyneema is really susceptible to chafe and I don't know where they get it from because it's, <laughs> it's certainly not. So this, um, this Dyneema soft shackle here is done for well, what we were sailing around about 40 miles plus 630, so nearly 700 nautical miles. This Dyneema um, soft shackle is done this trip, and this is a, this is I was using this previously before on a halyard. So this is our boom vang. So there's a lot of stress that's been going through this because it's been articulating a fair bit while we've been out at sea and, and crashing the boat around. But we can look here, and this it's it's not showing hardly any chafe on this you know stainless steel um, little ring here. No chafe at all. And on on this frictionless ring here, which is a redirect, you know, for various lines coming back to winches. I mean, you might go, that's, I, I made sure that this was all nice and smooth, but there's, there's zero signs of chafe. Um, I don't know how, how, how long it takes the average boat to get 600 miles. We did it fairly quickly because we were making passage, but I can't see 
any chafe for any of those lines and they've been working hard. So this particular one, I was trying to get a, a better lead and what I'll probably end up doing is drill this and file it, make it nice and smooth. But I just ran it off there just to see how we'd go and it was something I've been keeping an eye on. But again, this Dyneema, it's been rubbing up against that aluminium channel there. And all that's happened is it's polished the blue <laughs> PU coating off it. But I can't even find a broken fibre on there. Everywhere else we look around the boat, I just can't see any fraying of the Dyneema at all. Like at all. That's They've been pulled apart and spliced. Yeah, this is just where I pulled apart. So just through there, that's, that's actually part of the inside core that went through. So that's why, that's why that's sticking out. That's not a broken strand. And in any case, this is up in the lashing. So this hasn't really seen any work. This is what we undo. And I'll be picking at this with my fingernails. So sometimes I'll pick a little bit of it out. But really, this is the Dyneema that's doing all the work. And we can see that all that loading back and forward hasn't caused any issues there at all. And this is one of the this is one of the lower um, one of the lower shrouds, so it really it really was working. Same again, like this looks light grey because I, I pulled it apart and spliced that loop into it, um, and all of this that you see is light grey, but the the hard working stuff is is tight. None of those shackles have showed any sign of backing out whatsoever, um, but that's no surprise. These are these are being used in their in their purpose. Some people were wondering why this was lashed this way instead of around through the groove like our backstays are. And the reason being is so we can lash that and the correct alignment to go back to a winch. I think I had one or two people saying the correct way to do this, and I don't know about the correct way, but the, the guy that's been doing this for 20 years, <laughs> we sort of trusted him to come up with the best method. And that's why it's done this way. So it's gone through there and this one as well. And that's so that these, um, these rings are aligned in such a way that we can use our sheet winches to pull more tension on if we need to. We can use the halyard, but it doesn't get nearly as much grunt as we can get with our cockpit winches. So that's how they're done. And the other thing that I didn't mention is that Andrew's boat's next door, the, Anni the Annihilator. So we're big west coaster and he has turned on the hot water to his shower there and offered us hot showers, which is just our idea of heaven because it's been two weeks now since we left the marina in Kettering so we haven't had a hot shower in two weeks. What? Yeah, so huh. we're gonna go I, ha I haven't actually shower. had any sort of cleaning in two weeks. Yes you have, you've had a sponge bath, that don't just, lie. I was thrown in for comedy reasons. <laughs> After a very welcome hot shower we went for a walk to visit some of the historical sites of Robe. The remains of these old jail ruins were built in the 1860s to house prisoners awaiting trial in Adelaide. Just an absolutely great collection of signs, <laughs> falling off cliffs. We are great admirers of falling off cliff signs and Rope has the best collection we've ever seen. There was also this old time obelisk thingy. Construction in 1855 out of limestone as a navigation marker. It was also used to store rockets tied to lines and baskets, which were fired to rescue passengers on ships in distress. We're off to Kangaroo Island today and it's going to be an overnight passage, so I'm preparing us a couple of hot meals and there will also be leftovers for when we arrive, which is really great. I did the same thing when we left Tasmania to come here to South Australia. I made two big curries. Um, and what I'm using to prepare this food um, involves no heating when we're on passage. Basically, I prepare it now and it cooks while we're underway. Um, and what I'm using is this. It's a Thermos Shuttle Chef. Um, they're really fantastic. I heard about them first from the My Dreamtime gang. They're, they're a blog and another couple sailing around Australia. Um, we met them in Brisbane. Um, and yeah, so what I'm preparing today uh, for our passage is two Moroccan meals. Um, one is like a beef and eggplant tagine and the other is a pumpkin and chickpea tagine. And the beef that we put in it is Tassie beef. Our wonderful friend Frances, she 
uh, put together a whole lot of um, canned chuck steak for us from Tassie. So we've got lots of food to keep us going, but hopefully we're going to catch some fish soon. So this is the Shuttle Chef. It's not really a new idea. It's kind of similar to the old timey hay box cooking. Um, so it's just an insulated cylinder and you put your boiling um, food inside and then it slow cooks um, and it only loses three degrees an hour. So it really slow cooks food really, really well. So these have been simmering for 45 minutes now and they're ready to go in. Um, another thing that we really like about this Shuttle Chef is that we can put this food away and we don't have um, anything simmering on the stove. There's no naked flame. Like I can get around and do things on the boat and it'll just be um, slowly cooking away in there. It's also really fuel efficient. Um, these sorts of meals, like reheating food all the time and things like that, does take up a bit of metho and um, we don't have heaps of space to carry a lot of methylated spirits, which is denatured alcohol, which is what our stove runs on. So just put them in like so. And when we're not um, cooking with this shuttle chef, the pots fit inside one another. And we're actually using these pots now as our main cooking pots because they're really great stainless pots. Um, so when we're not cooking with it, um, it's really great storage. Everything's really well contained. I have my own space for the shuttle chef because now we have these sliding doors. We have so much space under the sink and next to the stove. So there's an actual dedicated space. There's a right and a wrong way to have the handle, like it locks in one way and then the lid can't come off while you're on passage. And this is really locked in in here now. We find that nothing rattles in this cupboard with the shuttle chef and my pot's arranged this way. And just shut the door. We're not really endorsed, we're not sponsored by shuttle chef or anything like that. It's actually a thermos product. Um, which is, we've had issues with Thermos before. <laughs> um, and there are other brands available, but we got recommended um, the Shuttle Chef by My Dream Time, so we just rolled with that one. But yeah, there's other, there's other similar style concepts available for cruises. So we're having something of an issue at the moment that we want to be where we're going at about nine o'clock. Um, <laughs> with, with the speed that we're doing at the moment, um, you know, it looks like we're going to get there a bit earlier, but we were just going under head sail before, um, but it just, it just proved a little bit uncomfortable. It's quite messy condition, so we threw up the mainsail as a stabiliser. But um, now our average speed is pushing up around six knots and you know, we're, like, we're surfing along at seven on occasion. So I think what we'll do is we'll just barrel along for the moment, be a little bit more comfortable, um, and then you know, later on, if, if needs must, then we'll, we'll just heave to. I was trying to slow us down just under a head sail, but it, it wasn't working out, you know, it was, it was pretty sloppy. Um, so with a, with a more balanced rig like this, the yacht's a lot more comfortable. And the other thing is, is because we're doing like six knots or six, average speed of 6.2 at the moment, um, speed gives us stability, so it's just a lot more comfortable. So yeah, if we need to we'll just kill a few hours um, at the other end by heaving too, but later on in the night maybe the wind will ease, um, we'll see. We still have to go wing on wing a bit as the wind shifts more to, the, more to our stern, um, and it could be that we'll go even faster, but <laughs> we'll see what we can do. We might have to reef reef down really heavily but now if we go too slow then it starts to roll and not be that great so anyway we'll see how we go it's it's not the worst problem in the world have
laid out in the quad berth, but I'm just looking out for any chips. There's still some pretty crazy seas behind us and a bit of a big swell. Ooh, here's a big one now. <laughs> the shearwaters are, um, are having a great time. Our friends are shearwaters. And yeah, we'll check in later, maybe tomorrow, because soon it's going to be night. Just the wind gets behind the, the mainsail blankets, the head's all a bit just down the waves. I think we might just be on mainsail at the moment. It's because we're just on the right, we're just surfing a set. <laughs> it's crazy, hey? We'll come back around in a minute. We're just surfing this set. <laughs> away from our anchorage at Emu Bay. We're on a really nice beam reach. I had to chuck the engine on earlier because the wind were behind us and I couldn't feel the sails enough to get us going but the wind shifted back around now so on a nice beam reach and I'm um, going to do the dishes again. <laughs> Seems to be the, the way of things when we're underway and on passage it's much easier to do the dishes in the cockpit. But we're going um, going at good speed. We're going about five to six knots. That sound of surf that you can hear is our anchorage for tonight. So we've settled in at um, Emu Bay, Kangaroo Island. Pretty vigorous putting the anchor in there, wasn't I? A little, yes. bit, out, little bit out of practice. <laughs> gave, it, gave it a bit too much grunt. Um, that's all right. Pasky covered for us. So it's all gone. It's all gone pretty well. This is a, a really nice change, as you'd appreciate from our our months in Tasmania fixing up the boat, and it's all been worth it. Like. Um, the, the last 750 odd miles that we've done, I think. Um, no no major problems, you know, there's been a few little niggles, like you would have with a, like a brand new boat, I guess. But, um, you know, it's really great. My jobs list hasn't grown too much. Tusky's happy, I'm happy. And yeah, we're, we're really, really looking forward to just listening to those natural sounds tonight. It's gonna be a big change for us.
We hope you enjoyed this week's video and if you did, thanks for giving it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you haven't already, thanks also for subscribing. And until then, we'll see you next time.